This is a 2007 Volvo S80 V8. I've always had a soft spot for Volvos and I've always lusted to own one. And what a better way to start Volvo ownership with one with a, a V8 in it. I didn't even know they existed until a few weeks ago. And who knew such a combination existed? For those of you who commented on my YouTube and on my Instagram on guesses of what the car may be, um, thank you all. Um, I had some absolute bonkers uh, uh, suggestions because I kept hinting it's a very weird choice such as Lada Nevers, Fiat Panda 4x4s, Fiat Coupes, Maserati, then someone even commented the Daihatsu Copen. Well they, they are excellent choices but the, the one who got closest was Mark and he guessed a Volvo T6 which is an excellent choice but not quite because we have a Volvo S80 V8. I am led to believe that there are only around 100 S80 V8s left in the country, so it makes it quite a desirable, unique and a unicorn of a car. And what's also worth mentioning is that they only produced two V8s and put them into production, which is the S80 and also the XC90. More so, what's even more interesting about this particular S80 that I purchased was actually it was the cheapest S80 V8 in the country at the time. Talking of cheap, let's discuss how much I actually paid for this superb Swede. Back when this was new, a 4.4 SE Lux like this would have set you back around £40,000. I only paid a rather respectable £4,400. And it's done 92,000 miles. It's also got a full service history. And it's only got one owner from new, apart from myself. So. Everything is brilliant so far. However, not everything is so merry. So let's have a walk around and I'll explain further why. Okay, here we are with my 2007 Volvo S80 V8. And one of the things that I love about this car is the sheer discreetness of this car. It's just so understated. It's got nothing to prove. It just screams opulence and serenity. I, I love it. It looks brilliant. So let's just move around the car. I'm led to believe it's finished in panther black, although it is quite faded. Uh, there's a bit of dried bird excrement in the car. Um, down here we got quite a lot of scuffs and there's a big scuff there. I love the orange surrounding the indicator. It's quite Americanized, but I actually quite like that. But the um, headlights themselves could definitely do with buffing out to show these beautiful bi-xenon lights. Also have a little windscreen washer there, which is quite protruding, but I can forgive that. Moving on to the front of the grille, you can see the plastic is quite faded. The Volvo badge is a bit tatty, but look at that. The V8 badge, and I am led to believe there's only three giveaways to show that it's a V8. One of them requires ears, but there's one V8 badge at the front and there's one around the back, which I'll show you very shortly. But yeah, the car has just been, it's been pr treated pretty poorly. Uh, it's not had a, the best of life. It, it really, really needs some TLC. Got fake vents there, nice honeycomb mesh around the bottom. Come around to the side, uh, more scuffs. And you've got more gouges here. And then the worst of them all is down here. Oh, my dearie me. The car just screamed in TLC. And I think there's a bit of a, a dent there as well. That's not too good. But remember, I only paid £4,400 for it. So in all is well. Whilst we're down here, I suppose, we should have a look at the wheels. Um, this was really important to me after coming out of that Porsche Cayenne ownership. I've been sensible this time, I've gone for 17s, and they look good, they're visually pleasing to look at. Maybe not in the best state in the world, bit of marks here and there, yeah, not looking particularly in the best, but at least these nuts aren't really rusty, they look pretty new. And what tyres have we got on? We have got Duran, Duran, Duran Duran, good band, and they are the M6 30s, but yes, 245, four five seventeens, very very thick sidewall and that's going to play a big part 
and how much I'm going to love driving this on the roads. Just noticed that this little uh, piece here is quite protruding, doesn't really fit in. Same story on the other side. But look, we have a sunroof for our lovely winters and we also got a nice shark fin aerial. Coming around to the side, we have some Continentals. We're getting upmarket tires here and they are Conti Sport Contacts, fives. It's quite a premium tire actually. This wheel's kind of looking the same as well. Bit of marks there. Also just noticed a bit of a ding there as well and a lot more scrapes as well. Coming round to the rear of the car is probably my favourite. I love the look of the S80. It, like I said earlier, it's just so discreet, got nothing to prove. It's, it's good looking, but it's nothing too leery. And what I really love are these exhaust pipes. Now they don't look particularly imposing, but we have two of them. Not four, nothing over drastic, just very subtle and discreet once again. But it's the fact that these exhaust pipes are exactly the same as you'd get on a D4. So it's no different to just a regular diesel S80, apart from the V8 badge and of course, four wheel drive as well. Perfect for our winter months coming ahead. Yeah, I just love the way the body just follows the light cluster. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Uh, another thing worth mentioning is, mm, yes, very scratched bumper the, just by the boots, not very good. And this is the, probably the most <laughs> deteriorated number plate I've ever seen. It's literally hanging on by a thread, but that can be easily changed and this car will be looking as good as new, hopefully in the following months to come. Yeah, more scuffs in the side, more scratches here, there and everywhere. Come down here, what the tires have we got here? Are they matching? Oh, it's a good year. It's a good year, what? Efficient grip. Well, at least we know I've got some grip going around the corners. In the alloys, a bit marked, but they're not really curved. They're just a bit, hmm, a bit scratched there, but nothing too bad, nothing too drastic. But yeah, so far we have three different tyres. Let's see if the front one's any different. Yes, once again we have more scratches. This car has just been terribly looked after, but hopefully I can do it some justice and fix it up a little bit and make it as good as new. And come back to the final tire. Let's see if we have a different one to make it. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, we've got a Duran Duran again. We've got a matching Duran Duran at the front, just a Continental and a Goodyear at the back and then 636 and a Tread is looking very respectable indeed. Right, let's go inside the car, shall we? Because that is really where the magic happens. So if we look here, keyless entry in a 2007 car, how brilliant. Mirrors, electrically folding. But this is the highlight for me. I just love this interior. It just reminds me of Werther's Originals. Just look at it. It's just beautiful to look at. And better still, look, we have wood. I've always wanted wood in an interior with the contrast and cream as well and the black exterior. It is just a joyous interior to be in. Okay, uh, the seats have definitely seen better days as well as the exterior, but what a beautiful interior. This is pure Werther's Originals. So let's have a little walk around the interior. Nothing too drastic, nothing too in depth. I'm just gonna give you a quick walk around because, because truth be told, it's not actually a really high spec one. There's a lot of options missing, but I didn't really buy it for the options. I bought it for that lovely V8 and smoothness. So let's just start it up, put the key in, keyless. How lovely, press on the start button to initiate all the electrics. Lovely cream steering wheel with buttons on it. Cruise control, you can scroll through the menus using this little scrolly thing here. 
You've got your lovely heated seats down here. And we are missing quite a lot of options, like I said. Uh, usually, you'd get one with cooled seats, which would be here. But I like how they didn't like just give you blank buttons like they do in like BMWs or Mercedes to make you look really poor and uh, peasant. I believe you can also get heated seats in the rear, which I don't have. Um, you can also get a very premium stereo, which I don't have because you don't need that with a 4.4 V8. That is the stereo. Uh, moving on down here, we have more lovely supple wood with a lovely gear shifter, which you can shift manually if you wish. There are no paddles because this is a luxury barge. But I just love this little centerpiece here uh, with all the buttons on it. And there's a lot of buttons, but I like how it looks and I love how it's like a thin trim piece just floating in the center of the dash, which also I really love are these seats. I love how thin the head rests are and I, it just looks lovely in general, apart from all these cracks here. But what's also lovely are the supple leather, which it comes with. It's so comfortable. I've done a long journey in this already and it feels fantastic. Um, there are some also cool features so if we just go in here and open up the center console i've got this it's a remote and if i just press the on button look i have a screen rise rise that is a brilliant feature and you can um press enter and you will find we have sat nav and you can control it using this so i'm not sure if this is actually legal now uh, but you can press buttons on it and use the remote controller. Or if you can't do that because it might be illegal, you can actually operate it using this little joystick here, which um, you can uh, select right there. But one of the best features, which I think is also legal to use now, is under this armrest here. Um, if I just open it up. Hello! A telephone, if I can just get it out, look at that. It's got a cord and everything. Hello, this is your captain speaking. That is a fantastic feature. I wish I could still use it. So if we just shut this little screen down for now, put it back in where it belongs. Watch the screen go down to the sunrise, or the sunset rather. And then moving on up to the sky, we have a lovely sunroof which you can open and then pull so you can block out the whole world and just bask in your lovely cream headliner. Overall though, I am absolutely besotted with the whole car, um, especially in the interior. It's a beautiful place to be and I've always lusted for wood. I love wood, especially in a contrasting interior like this. Uh, however, not everything is so rosy, um, especially in here, um, because it's something I cannot portray in camera, um, because such a thing as smell -o vision fortunately, doesn't exist yet. Um, and that is, unfortunately, the diabolical smell in here is... It's smelly! It's, it's absolutely atrocious in here. Um, I've had to crack a window open for the majority of my ownership because... It's terrible and that is because it is a smoker's car. Um, I don't know why I proceeded buying it, but I thought it might be an interesting uh, concept to try and clean it all up. So if anyone has any tips and ideas out there on how to eradicate this uh, appalling smell, then please do let me know. Um, I have Googled various things such as detail, steam cleaning, an ozone generator in the car. I don't know how long you meant to keep them in the car for, but yes, it is an in desperate uh, need of TLC internally and externally because, yeah, this one owner really did not care much for his car, unfortunately. So it's all on me now to make sure this car is pristine and in a lovely, loving condition again. However, there are a couple more teething uh, issues as well. Um, when I turn the aircon on, there is like a metallic grinding noise. And when you accelerate with the aircon on, 
the revs kind of follow that metallic noise and when I turn the aircon off, disappears. Uh, so I don't know if it's a case of it needs regassing or the air con, I can't remember the name of the part, um, apparator thing might need replacing. Another noise uh, is a very um, whistly noise coming somewhere near the engine area and that's on tick over idling and it whistles more as you accelerate as well, which I'm gonna give you a little bit of a listen in a minute. So yeah, touch wood, uh, everything's okay. I'm gonna get the car checked over and before I give this a serious drive, I'm gonna make sure it's all confirmed and I'm gonna take it to a Volvo specialist to make sure the car is in lovely working order. So I'm not gonna keep suspense any longer. Let's go and pop the bonnet and turn the engine on and we'll have a look around the engine and find out a few more things about it because it's quite a weird engine. Um, so let's have a look, have a listen to that noise and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, so if we just press the start button and we can listen to the engine rev. Oh yes, what a noise. Did you hear that little metallic rattle to start with? Made a little grinding noise and it stopped because the aircon's off. So I thought it may just be like, oh, I'll make the grinding noise and then I'll turn myself off again because I realise the air comes off. I don't know, but yeah, let's just pop the engine. But can you hear that noise already? That noise, listen. I believe the more you rev it as well and the more you, the faster you drive it, the, the noise follows. If I just give it a blip. And you hear it starts to settle down as the revs start to fall. So let's just have a under, look under the bonnet. I know there's a very weird catch here. There we go. Oh, what a beauty. Such a long bonnet. But this is the actual V8 itself. Can you hear that weird noise? That very annoying high pitched noise. But yes. This engine, this 4.4 litre V8, is known as the V8 444S. Um, it's transversely mounted, as you can see. Um, I had to Google what that meant, but it means it's this way as opposed to that way. Quite a weird design. More interesting facts about the engine itself. Um, this engine in particular was actually helped develop by a company that make pianos and motorbikes. That is of course Yamaha. And Yamaha helped develop this masterpiece of an engine. And this engine actually managed to find itself in the really fast performing supercar, which is the Noble M600. They took this engine away and they strapped two turbochargers to it. But yes, if anyone can give me a hand, hand on what that noise, what that noise might be, would be much appreciated. But I have heard other S80s on YouTube and they have this similar whistling noise. So maybe it's just a characteristic of the engine. So there we have it, everyone. This is my new to me 2007 Volvo S80 V8. And I really hope you love this choice of car. Um, before I take it on a first drive video, I want to get it checked out at a local Volvo specialist, just in case before I take it on a hard drive. And if you guys didn't know this existed, I'd love to know in the comments because I genuinely didn't know this such a car like this existed. Um, and let me know what you guys think of it. Is it a, a terrible choice? I personally love it. I think it's a brilliant choice and it's a car I kind of need through winter. Evidently, the all-wheel drive is very much needed. And I know the Porsche was a good winter car, but I wanted something different and this is different all over so thank you very much for watching and if you have enjoyed please do give the video a like and comment down below what you think of the car and make sure you're subscribed for future videos other than that thank you very much for watching and bye for now